Well, happy Christmas Eve. I'm here celebrating with a good old simple American lager. And so should you be. That is, unless you're a goddamn communist. So, recently I've been babbling about philosophy. And as such, one of the topics I've been discussing is philosophy and science, their distinctions, their overlap, their common origin. Towards that end, I did a bit of Googling and stumbled on this article from PNAS.org. PNAS is an acronym that stands for Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America. And what they did is they decided to illustrate the importance of science and philosophy being, again, seen in a cooperative light and as having commonalities that are mutually beneficial. And towards that end, they took three examples of where philosophy was useful to science. And one of these, I can't go over them in any depth or all of them because I simply don't have the time, but one of these was especially interesting because it has to do with cognition. And I think that cognition is an especially salient uh, or, or point of interest for you know, philosophy because how can we know what we know is an answer that is highly elucidated by understanding the mechanisms that underlie our very knowingness, right? So this model I thought was very, very cool, and it uh, sort of matched what I had already learned about parallel distributed processing as being the way that the brain functions, and also um, that there is no homunculus in the brain, as per Antonio Damasio's uh, book, I think it was either Descartes' Error, or The Feeling of What Happens, or maybe he mentions it all throughout his books, but basically there's no central one thing that uh, unifies or controls your brain. Your brain is an emergent phenomenon, and here's how that emergent phenomenon, according to a guy named Jeremy Fodor, uh, you know, arises. So... Modularity, that's what it's called. And modularity refers to the idea that mental phenomenon arise from the operation of multiple distinct processes, not from a single undifferentiated one. Inspired by evidence in experimental psychology, by Chomsky and linguistics, and by new computational theories and philosophy of mind, Fodor theorized that human cognition is structured in a set of lower-level, domain-specific, informationally encapsulated, specialized modules in a higher-level, domain, general, central system for abductive reasoning modules in a higher-level, domain, general, central system for abductive reasoning with information only flowing upward vertically, not downward or horizontally, i.e. between modules. He also formulated stringent criteria for modularity and wanted to confuse the ever-loving fuck out of everybody. So... Let's break that down step by step to the best of my ability. I'm a simple man. I drink a simple lager, but I will try my hardest. Inspired by evidence in experimental psychology, by Chomsky and linguistics, and by new computational theories and philosophy of mind, he theorized the structure in a set of lower level domain specific information in capsule specialized modules and higher level domain general system for abductive reasoning. So. Okay, so there's the lower level stuff, so I suppose it's like your um, cerebellum and all of those lower level but kind of survival limbic functiony parts of the brain. Uh, and also, you know, like the, the processing of, of, of visual inputs and things. Um, and then those, on top of them have a higher level domain general central system for abductive reasoning with information only flowing upward vertically, not downward or horizontally. So the information goes up from those aforementioned lower level things, gets kind of processed by the higher level stuff, but doesn't uh, flow downward or out to what? So that's getting confusing, isn't it? Why wouldn't it? Domain, general, central system for abductive reasoning and information only flowing upward vertically, not downward or horizontally. Okay, so it's impulse and not information, but isn't impulse a form of information? You see, I'm using philosophical kind of ways of, of just asking questions to try to get an understanding of this. And therefore, philosophy and science are, are related. Mm-hmm. No, same. 
is operational definitions and conceptual elucidation is the purview of philosophy. And in order to make sense of the findings of science, such as the cerebellum controls some motor fu aspects of motor function and other things, uh, and how that functions in the, in the grander system uh, of the brain, yeah, well, that takes both the findings of, you know, experiment, statistical inference, and then philosophizing to systematize, and then to explain the system as fiction, if that's making any sense. But yeah, that's just kind of food for thought. So basically, again, I did a terrible job of breaking it down, but you, the information is there, and I've kind of given a, a, a summary of it, sort of. Uh, so why it's interesting, why I wanted to highlight this, why I wanted to bring this forward as kind of like a little morsel for everybody this Christmas Eve in the spirit of giving it is because it answers a question that a lot of people have, like, well, how does, how do we happen? And I'm not trying to explain away the soul or anything. I don't think that giving a mechanism is going to explain away any kind of like intrinsic humanity that you have. But I think that understanding this process will lead us to better understand ourselves and how we come up with our ideas. And that's just kind of a good thing because then we'll be able to solve mental issues, emotional issues, as well as issues of how we study things so that we can understand the world around us better by understanding ourselves better. So the reason that this is interesting is that it, it doesn't, none of this arises from, you know, this, this single like Inus, the Inus arises out of a bunch of stuff happening at once. So you are this concert. And I just think that's a really cool thing. And I wanted to share it and go forth. I'll provide the link and read up on on this stuff yourself and yeah um happy holidays everybody take care and uh cheers simple rick that's a rick and morty reference because uh well because i'm basic goodbye